Yo, what is up guys? In this video, we are going over some controller settings in Rocket League that may help you play better. Some of these settings you may know and others you may have never thought of doing. This video was made for new and veteran players alike. Let me know in the comments below what you think the best controller settings are, as well as be sure to like this video and subscribe to the YouTube channel if you're new. We're well on our way to 1.5 thousand subscribers. So the first thing any new player should do is move your arrow roll and drift from its default location. Most players move this to left bumper. The biggest advantage of doing this is you can now drift or arrow roll without removing your hands from either boost or jump, making your arrow rolls and drifts seamless and instantaneous. Remember, the faster and smoother you are at something, the quicker you can get to the ball, and in this game, milliseconds matter. While this next setting is optional, it is highly recommended for higher level play. Many players have adapted to using an air roll left or right. Not only does having this bound to a button allow for better ease of harder mechanics, such as the breezy flick, it also allows you to cleanly air roll in the direction you would like. If you use free air roll, there is a chance where you don't turn directly left or right, therefore causing you to lose momentum or roll improperly. The use of an air roll left or right gets rid of this inconsistency and allows you to gain more control in the air. Next, we're gonna talk about moving your boost button. This is not done quite as often. Moving boost to another button can make it easier on your fingers to jump and boost at the same time. Some players move boost to right bumper. My personal preference is X or square, and this is why. With your thumb over X or square, you can easily cover X or A and X or square without moving your wrist or putting your thumb in an awkward position. Your thumb easily rests over A and X at the same time. It still does take some time to get used to, but with this setup, you can play Rocket League for hours without fatigue. Next, we're gonna to touch on something that is just as important as your controller inputs, which is your sensitivity in dead zone settings. You want your settings to feel natural to your playstyle and find something that is comfortable to you. A good rule of thumb for controller dead zone is to set it as low as possible without having any false inputs on your left thumbstick. This means lowering that number as low as possible until your car begins to turn on its own and then raising that number one or two to stop it. This will ensure your controller is as sensitive to input as it can be without feeling sluggish. As for your dodge dead zone, this comes down to personal preference and what you are comfortable with. Dodge dead zone is basically how much input is needed in the left thumbstick in order to dodge after your first jump. The higher the dead zone, the more input is needed in order to dodge. Many players use a dodge dead zone of 0.50 or higher to prevent accidental dodges when they simply want to double jump. I personally run a point 30. Steering and aerial sensitivity are open to be adjusted with your comfort level. However, I strongly recommend playing on a higher aerial sensitivity relative to your steering sensitivity. Add everything we just covered in this video and you should be well on your way to improving your performance in Rocket League with these optimized controller settings. I hope this video helped you fine tune your controller settings in Rocket League. If you're new to Rocket League, let me know in the comments what settings you will be running. And don't forget to subscribe to this channel for more Rocket League content and news.